so welcome back everybody welcome back to the channel it's sunday um i'm sat in my van this is generally what happens on a sunday i think my neighbors must think i'm fucking nuts really they must think i'm just a complete weirdo because i do this on weekends i'll just grab a coffee and i'll just sit in the van and just i'll give it a hoover a clean i've tidied out the van already so that can't be done i could give the inside a quick polish actually i could do that uh, I will wash the van later, but that won't be until about six o'clock. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to know if other tradesmen do this, actually, whether you just get bored rigid on a weekend and you just... I do. I just sit in my van. I just find it. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds so sad, but it's true. I don't care. I think my neighbours think I'm a bit weird, though. I, I accept that. That's fine. There are a few people um, talking about um, jump cuts. Why do you do so many jump cuts? Um, for anybody who doesn't know what a jump cut is, uh, a jump cut is where you take um, a section of video and you basically cut a piece out in the middle of it and you squish the two outer pieces together to make one piece. Um, and you can do that for various reasons. You can do it because... Um, you can do it because you have uh, cocked something up, uh, something that you've said, and you want to cut it out and remove it. Uh, that's the reason that I do it, because I'm not actually that articulate. And sometimes I'll say a sentence that's 60 seconds long, when in actual fact it could be 25. So that's why I do jump cuts, because sometimes I... And also I repeat things as well, as some of you know. I'll say a sentence, and as silly as it sounds, I'll literally repeat the same thing again. I don't know why. I don't know why. I've always done that since I, I've just done it there. Um, I, I have no idea. I've just done it there again. It's just one of those things that I've done since a young age and it's always been there. So that's the reason sometimes you see jump cuts is because I repeat myself. So the way to get around it is I just, I cut it out. Uh, I think I'm up, I'm up to date on all my invoicing. Uh, I can't do anything there. I'm fully up to date. I've just repeated myself. Um, Although I haven't got the invoices out of Dave's van. We've moved over to these um, job... I'm actually... I've had some custom ones made up, which haven't been delivered yet. Um, and these are just... The idea behind these job invoices I'm, as I'm trying to... I'm trying to speed up efficiency. So every time Dave goes and does a job, or every time I go and do a job, I fill out one of these, these job books. Put your times, dates, materials and everything. Allocated time on site. I then give one to the client, I take one away with me, and the one that I take away and Dave takes away, I collect them at the end of the day, give them to the admin, we give the, her those admin, those service books, the service sheets, and then she can just make up an invoice, because what I'm trying to do is step away from invoicing and stuff, and I want to spend more time doing camera work and stuff, the more, for me, what I think matters more to you guys. So I've got to do something to speed up the admin, so I've introduced that. That thing of putting fuse boards at 1400, that was uh, controversial, wasn't it? I think I've come to the conclusion that I don't think it makes... I don't think it makes any difference how right or wrong you think a reg is. You'll never, you'll never have a reg where everyone, everyone agrees on it, you know? The amount of people who are like, ah, oh, now you should still mount it at 1400, regardless of whether it's in a garage, because an old lady might buy that house. Well... Yeah, all right. I mean, I disagree, but I think that's that's half of where people argue over regs because everybody has a different opinion. I mean, I'd be of the opinion that a little old lady in a Zimmer frame is not going to buy a fucking four-story townhouse, are they? You know, they're going to buy somewhere, and if it is, you know, on the third or fourth floor, it's going to have lift access. That's just the way I see it. Yeah, so I basically end up having a mini, mini nervous breakdown every weekend because... I can't do weekends, I just, I struggle like fuck with them. Do any of you guys suffer with this at the weekends? I'd be genuinely interested to know, tradesmen, contra, not just electricians, plumbers, anybody, AC engineers, anybody, when you get to the weekend, what do you do? I've done all my paperwork, I'm relatively up to date on, I mean there's some paperwork I've still got to do, but I'm not doing it this weekend, I just, you, I also can't be bothered to do it partly. So, I've done all my main invoicing this morning. I've got like 11 grand's worth of outstanding invoices, which I should probably chase up. So yeah, I come down, I just sit in my van and have a cup of tea and, what well, coffee actually, and just uh, have a think and think of what I've got to do on Monday and, yeah, as sad and pathetic <laughs> as that sounds. Very warm. 
I was supposed to be going on a ride out today actually on the Ducati, but uh, the camera guy's not got back to me, so I'm guessing he's busy. Yeah, what a crap week this week. I'm thoroughly deflated. Do other contractors do that when customers ring you and you write the phone number down on a bit of... <laughs> I've written this down off the box of something or other and I've put it here and I've now got no idea who that number was really. In fact, I do remember now, it was that job down in Ballam. That was right. I've got to invoice that actually, I forgot. I, I need to do that. So I shall keep that with me actually. Yeah, I picked up um, a drum of whole, uh, a drum of wholesaler. I picked up a drum of uh, four mil armoured from TLC the other day. A hundred metres of four mil armoured, right? And I picked it up. And you know how wholesalers they always like to sell more than what you want. So if you say to them, "I need, oh, I need thirty-five metres of armoured," they'll always sell you fifty. They because they just don't want to have to reel off the. 15 meters because I have to go out the back put it on the yellow cable horse reel off it they just don't want to do it so they'll just give you a good price on 50. so you're like okay fine um and I took 100 meters and I only used about 20 meters I know for a fact I there's no way I used more than 20 I just we just didn't anyway I took the 80 meters back and I went to the I, it wasn't me did it? it was Dave and I just said to Dave oh, I'll just take this back and there was the receipt just take it back and I've always been of the understanding that wholesalers always take armoured back, you know, Edmonton, Cities, Flamingos, you know, even little independent wholesalers like Flamingos in Collindale, they always take stuff back, you know, because as soon as you turn around and say, oh, you can't take that back, it just pisses the customer off. So they always take it back. And TLC sell armoured by the metre, so I don't really understand what the problem is, but they wouldn't take it back. I don't understand where wholesalers get this thing of, why do that? You've just ruined a perfectly good business relationship right up until that moment. Why, why ruin it over a drum of armoured? Do you know what I mean? Because they sell it by the metre. So, I mean, I, I know why they don't like taking armour back, because they have to put it on the cable horse and reel it off to verify how much armour's there. Um, but I don't understand. Why ruin a relationship over it? Because I don't want to shop. I, w I won't shop there now. That's it. I, that really fucks me off. Why do it? Pisses me off, actually, because wholesalers are happy enough to sell you stuff. As soon as you open your wallet, they're happy enough to sell you stuff. Ah, oh, you want that, that, that? Yeah, they'll give you all the time in the world. As soon as you want to take something back, they piss and moan. Anyway, there you go. Yes, I'm no good at weekends, so I'd love to know if everybody else gets like this as well, because when it gets to the weekend, I literally just want to peel off my face and tear it into confetti. Never have too many blue shoes. Yes, so this is what I get up to on a weekend. It's fun, isn't it? It's sad is what it is. I mean, actually, I don't think it is. I, you know, because I actually quite like doing it. I like keeping order and structure and having everything neatly arranged because I think it gives you a lot of mental uh, sort of clarity. It gives you a bit of mental, you know, same reason like every Sunday I wash the van because for me, I think it gives a bit of mental, you know, it's just clarity it gives you. And it's nice when you open the, your van and everything's sort of neat and organized. Yeah, so for me, stuff like this is very therapeutic. Sorting things, organizing things. I can do this on a weekend quite comfortably. That reminds me actually, there were people saying that, um, you know, when Dave emptied his tool bag out and they were saying, oh, if your tool bag doesn't look like that, it means you don't work hard enough. I would respectfully disagree i just like a super clean organized tool bag which i think a lot of electricians do i think it's quite common i think electricians do have a uh, you know they, they like to have structure and order and i think that's very common i think i don't know ah, that's all shit that dave's put in a dave loves to do this he puts shit in these little blue bags i have a subscriber who texted me this morning saying that it's pissing down in Liverpool and I've got a feeling it's the same rain because it looks very much like it's about to pour down here. 10 mil. I shall reel this off. How many metres have we got? I'm going with 10. So. Seven. I was wrong. Seven metres. What do you do with seven metres of 10 mil? It's not really enough. It's not really enough to do anything with. I'll keep it for a second, but if I don't use it in a, a matter of weeks, I'll get rid of it, because this literally is the only space I've got. 
I shall now write on it seven meters so I know how much I've got. Well, squeeze in there, yeah. Actually, that reminds me, somebody sent me, somebody sent me, this was ages ago, and I just haven't had time, because people send stuff in the post, and it just, trying to find time to fit it into the footage can be really difficult. So while I'm here, I'll read this out. Um, someone sent these, um, you know we were talking about this problem with, um, when you're clipping things like T&E onto outside walls and you've got to use the mortar line and ship. Well, someone sent these and they're basically these little clips like this. And I think, I think he said you drill a five mil hole. In fact, I've got the letter here. Uh, try these next time you have to cleat into rock hard mortar. You just drill a five mil hole in the brick, put a plug in, hammer the cleat into the hole in the plug, simple, yeah. So basically you drill a five mil hole, you just hammer this straight in and then you've got something that you can tie wrap or whatever or you put your twin nerf through that, but it's a way of holding it on an outside wall. Keep up the good work. Stuart, Stuart Arnold, I think he's... Don't let Dave get his hands on them. Absolutely right. Right, I think I'm gonna go and polish the bike. I'm gonna do something useful. How shall I end this video now?